but we'll get to you shortly. So I'm glad that you're here this morning as we are on Pentecost Sunday and the Spirit of the Holy Lord may come upon us and fill us and fan our flames. So we'll begin with this sharing the peace of Christ. May the peace of our risen Lord be with us all. Our land acknowledgement this morning, uh, when I was at Alcatraz, if you've been before, you would have seen on the sign where this is Indian land and the stories that they tell about it. And something I wasn't aware of, and we got to hear some inside stories from a ranger, was that apparently after 1969, when they closed the prison, under the Treaty of Laramie, it says that if a federal land isn't being used, that the Indian people can take it back, which they did with Alcatraz. And there was a lot of support for this. In fact, the band Creedence Clearwater Revival even bought them a boat so that it would be easier to go over. And then there was so much public support, and then all of a sudden the tide turned. And the reason was is that the officers' quarters, which had been a very fancy place, was burned down. And people were upset about this and accusing the indigenous people of doing it. And they said, we didn't do it. And they said, maybe the government did it. And the government said, we didn't do it. But as our guide told us, magically, right afterwards, it became a national park. And they took the land back and left us to our own conclusion. So on this day, with that in mind, we think of the indigenous people who walked this land and how they took care of it. Amongst our announcements today, we, there's a bunch of them, so please bear with me. Today we cautiously take another step towards normalcy with our new masking policy is in effect. Reopening committee has advised us that we need to mask except when sitting in our seats and then masking is optional. As we're celebrating Holy Communion, I'll ask that you please wear your mask when you come up to receive the elements and we still have distancing in effect. For those at home, if you've not yet provided a piece of bread and a small sacramental beverage for everyone watching, please pause the recording, get those elements and then continue on so we can all participate in communion. I had a tremendous vacation, and my sincere thanks to Glenn McPherson for leading worship on May 22nd, and Mary Anderson and the Outreach Committee on the 29th, as well as to Reverend Bill Sparling for offering emergency pastoral support while I was away. Thanks to all those who donated today to our monthly food drive to help Fair Share Food Bank, as well as those who bought toiletries for safety net. Now, next Sunday, June the 12th, Everyone is invited to dress very casually, very casually. And weather permitting, we'll be having an outdoor service, followed by a summer social with some snacks and ice cream, not lunch, but definitely some snacks and ice cream provided by our social committee. So something to look forward to there. And then you're encouraged to stay in the area as at 1 p.m., the Oakville Celtic Fiddle Orchestra will present a concert to raise funds for Food for Kids Halton in our sanctuary. And you know Earl Wees, our own member, he's part of that group. On Sunday, June 19th, will be our special Father's Day service, and the Outreach Committee is inviting us to donate $5 Tim Hortons gift cards for men who are residents at Hope Place as they recover. If you'd like to get together in my church office, next week I'll be in the church Tuesday from 3 to 9.30 and Thursday from 10.30 to 5.30. Just call my cell to reserve a time. Thanks to all who generously donated in raising funds for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society through Sherry's team. I haven't heard the final total yet, but it was mind-boggling what they were able to do. Sunday school will be continuing through June and then restart on September 11th. So if you're thinking uh, you might be able to help out on a Sunday, please speak with Chris. Lastly, before we get to celebrations, as you may be aware, this week, Armida Vanderwood succumbed to her brain cancer. And our thoughts and prayers go out to her son, Gordon, because we know they're very close, as well as her sister, Morna, 
and her nephews and other family members. Now, celebrations this week. This, there's a lot happening. On June 10th is the 97th anniversary of the founding of the United Church of Canada. 97. I've got such plans for the 100th anniversary. I'm already working on it. And today is a big day as it's Environment Sunday, it's Pride Sunday, and so we are inclusive and welcoming to all, and it's also National Day of Indigenous Prayer. Now, tomorrow on June 6th, it's Keith and Sharon McMillan's wedding anniversary. On the 11th is Jan and Paul Peter's anniversary. Don't forget, Paul. I don't want to be hearing confession next week. And two birthdays this week, Lorna Evans on the 7th and John McFadden on the 11th. So Yvonne, can we please sing happy birthday to John and Lorna. So whether we've been on vacation and trying to get caught up, whether it's working in the garden, no matter what, a lot of times we have very busy weeks, so it's good to set this time apart, to come together as a family in Christ. And I invite you to concentrate on the Christ candle and listen to the music as we take a deep breath and prepare for worship. We'll begin with the words to the call to worship that you'll find projected on screen. Today we celebrate Pentecost, and open ourselves to God's Spirit that it might fill us. May your rushing winds sweep away all barriers. Let us worship God. And we will with the singing of hymn number 195. This hymn is so Pentecost-based, we almost don't need to have the scripture reading today. But I'll invite you to rise as you are able as we sing together hymn number 195.
Please be seated. And we'll continue with the prayer of confession and invocation that you'll find projected on screen as we all say together. Generous God, you give us the gift of your spirit, but we confess that we have not known how to use it. You send us the spirit of courage, but we have been timid. You send us the spirit of truth, but we cling to our illusions. You send us the spirit of healing, but we cannot let go of our hurts. Holy Spirit of forgiveness, come to us again. Shake our hearts with the rushing wind. Set our souls on fire with your love. Send us out into the world rejoicing in your power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And the truly good news of the gospel is that Jesus sent us the Holy Spirit, the Advocate, to always be with us, to lift us up, to give us courage, to give us strength, to give us faith. And that is always there for us as we continue through our lives, no matter what happens. And that is truly good news indeed. Now we'll continue with the Sacrament of Holy Communion. So as I will always remind us, when we celebrate Holy Communion, we're taking a look back to the time when Jesus would share hospitality with friends and with followers, with the outcasts, no matter who. And everyone is invited today to partake. There is no requirement for membership, no requirement of age. This table is open to all because this is not the table of Glen Abbey United Church. This is not the table of the United Church of Canada. This is the table of Jesus Christ, and every single one of us are invited to it. So in the name of the one who said, I am the bread of life, I invite all of us to come and eat. In the name of the one who said, I am the true vine, I invite all of us to drink. In the name of the one who said, love one another as I have loved you, I invite everyone here and at home to the table of Jesus Christ. And we'll begin with the words of the great thanksgiving, which you'll find projected on screen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Let's bow our heads in prayer, please. Ever-loving God, we do give you thanks and praise, for although you're majestic in holiness, you're ever near and approachable for us. In the beginning, you created the universe, you made the sun and stars above our heads and the earth beneath our feet. And you came to this world in Jesus, the Word made flesh, only to be shunned, despised, and forsaken, but when you were here, you made the cross of death a tree of life, the empty grave a sign of glorious hope. Therefore, with all your people and with the whole company of heaven and all creation, we sing your praise as we say together the words printed on screen, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. And now we gather at this table to remember God's love made flesh in Jesus Christ. So in those days, Jesus would share food with followers and friends, with the outcasts of society, with thousands of people on a hillside, and then with just a few friends in an upper room. And on the night before he died, he had supper with his companions. He took a loaf of bread, and he broke it, and he gave thanks, and he, then he passed it amongst them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Whenever you do this, 
Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took a cup and he poured it out. And once again, he passed it amongst them, saying, Take, this cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant made in my blood. Whenever you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Because through this loaf and this cup, Jesus lives within us. But it's in our words and our deeds and our actions that Jesus lives among us. Loving God, we rejoice in the gift of your grace, remembering Christ's life and death, proclaiming his resurrection, waiting in hope for his coming again. Grant that in praise and thanksgiving we may so offer ourselves to you that our lives proclaim this mystery of faith that we'll say together, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Send, O God, your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts, that all who share in this loaf and this cup may truly be the body of Christ. All glory is yours, God most holy, now and forever. And as our Savior taught us, let us pray together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The bread which we break is our communion in the body of Christ. The cup of blessing that is poured out is our communion in the blood of Christ. The gifts of God for the people of God. So Tracy and I are going to sanitize our hands very well. We'll invite the choir to come forward first. And if you hold out your hands, I will drop one of the cups into it. And I'm just going to get my mask. And if folks could mask when they come up, please. All right, I'll invite the choir to come forward first, please. The body and blood of Christ, especially.
Now, just as a reminder, if you give that a little flick down, the upper layer becomes more accessible. So we'll remove the upper layer to access the wafer. This is the body of Christ, broken especially for each of us. If we think about all the amazing things that God has done for us in the past, is doing and will do, it's definitely something to give thanks as we eat together. And this is the blood of Christ, shed especially for each of us. And if we were the only people in the world who were in need of salvation, Christ still would have died for us. An amazing thought to have as we all drink together. And we'll continue with the prayer after communion that you'll find projected on screen. Let us pray together. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. Help us to serve one another and send us forth into the world, united in courage and peace, with hearts on fire, rejoicing from being filled with the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Okay. I'm Ted. Hey, Buford. Hey, I missed you. Well, I missed you too. Were you sick? No. Were you on sabbatical? No, that's not until the 27th. Well, where were you then? I was on vacation. And you didn't take me? Sorry, I couldn't. Oh, I bet you took your wife and your daughter, didn't you? Nope. What? Who'd you go with then? Oh, an old buddy from high school. From high school? Is he a hundred? <laughs> no, no, you shouldn't be so mean just because you didn't get to go. Oh, maybe he's 95. Where did you go? Well, I went to California. Oh, that sounds expensive. Hey, I saved up for a really long time, and then it got canceled three years in a row. Did you go to Hollywood? Oh, I sure did. Do you see any movie stars? Well, not really. I saw Tom Cruise's face all over the place on giant billboards for Maverick. Did you see any dog movie stars? Well, actually, I went to the set where they filmed Rin Tin Tin. Rin Tin Tin? Never heard of them. I mean, famous movie stars like Paw Patrol Pops or Air Bud. No, didn't see any of those. Yeah, some trip. Hey. You know the church's birthdays this week? Yeah. You said they'd be 97? Kind of like your buddy. Hey. Well, today is also the birthday of the church. This is um, Pentecost, the day that the church really began when the disciples started spreading the good news. Oh, well, that's good. How come we didn't sing happy birthday to the church? Okay. We couldn't sing happy birthday to everybody. Well... All right, then, and I forgive you for not taking me. Thanks. See you next week. All right. Okay, we're going to skip the praise song today with uh, communion. I think it's long enough service, and it is warm outside. So we'll go right in. If Did you want to go out to Sunday school, Sophie? Chris?
All right, have a good time. Nobody else gets to go. Enjoy. We'll see you later. All right, let's bow our heads, please. Loving God, as we do go through these days, we so often need your guidance in our lives. We need to hear the words that you have for us, whether it's in the songs that we sing, whether it's in the scriptures we're about to hear, whether it's in one of those moments when the sun comes shining in through that beautiful window and we just feel inspired. We ask you to please speak to us now. Let us be open to receiving your word and to doing something about it. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And I would like to invite Catherine Ward forward, please, for reading from the Gospel and the responsive psalm. Good morning. Our reading today is from John 14, verses 8 through 17 and 25 through 27. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you this whole time, Philip, and you, do, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not believe, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever." This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I have said these things to you while I'm with you, but the advocate, the Holy Father, whom, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. Our responsive reading today is Psalm 104, which I think is up here, but if not, you can find it in uh, Voices United on page 826, but I'll be reading from part two. O God, how manifold are your works. With, With wisdom, wisdom at your side, you made, made them, them all. all. The, the earth, earth is full, full of, of your, your creatures. creatures. There lies the great and mighty sea, teeming with living things, both great and small. Upon, Upon it sails the ships, and there is Leviathan, Leviathan, the monster, the monster you, made you made to play, play in, it. in it. All those look to you to give them their food in due season. What you, give, you them, give them, they gather, they gather up. up. When, when you, you open, open your hand, hand you fill, fill them with, them good, with things. good things. But when you hide your face, they despair. When you take away their breath, they die and return to dust. But when, but when you, you send, send out, out your, your spirit, spirit they, they live, live again, again and, and you, you renew, renew the face of the earth. earth. May your glory, O God, endure forever. May, May you, you rejoice, rejoice, O God, God in your works. In your works. When, you when you look at the earth, it trembles. When, when you, you touch, touch the, the mountains, mountains they, they smoke. smoke. I will sing to God as long as I live. I, I will, will praise, praise my God while, while I have being. being. Thanks be to God for these holy words, and thank you, Catherine, for doing such a fine job on the readings. Our anthem today is entitled, I Will Serve the Lord All My Days.
Thank you, Yvonne. Thank you, choir. That was a good one. I like that. By the way, I'm being the Lone Ranger with the mask because I only got back Tuesday night from traveling internationally, so I'm giving it five days of wearing it. All right. Well, our New Testament lesson today is, comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. And what we hear is recorded the first day of Pentecost, and we listen for God's word. When the day of Pentecost came, all the believers were gathered together in one place. Suddenly, there was a noise from the sky which sounded like a strong wind blowing, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then they saw what looked like tongues of fire which spread out and touched each person there. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to talk in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. There were Jews living in Jerusalem, religious people who had come from every country in the world. When they heard this noise, a large crowd gathered. They were all excited because all of them heard the believers talking in their own languages. In amazement and wonder, they exclaimed, These people who are talking like this are Galileans. How is it then all of us hear them speaking in our own native languages? We are from Parthia, Media, and Elam, from Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, from Pontus and Asia, from Phrygia and Pamphylia, from Egypt and the regions of Libya near Cyrene. Some of us are from Rome. Both Jews and Gentiles converted to Judaism, and some of us are from Crete and Arabia, 
yet all of us hear them speaking in our own languages about the great things that God has done. Amazed and confused, they kept asking each other, what does this mean? But others made fun of the believers, saying, these people are drunk. And Peter stood up with the other eleven apostles, and in a loud voice began to speak to the crowd, Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, listen to me, and let me tell you what this means. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. Instead, this is what the prophet Joel spoke about. This is what I will do in the last days, God says. I will pour out my spirit on everyone. Your sons and daughters will proclaim my message. Your young men will see visions, and your old men will have dreams. Yes, even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will proclaim my message. I will perform miracles in the sky above and wonders on the earth below. There will be blood, fire, and thick smoke. The sun will be darkened, and the moon will turn red as blood before the great and glorious day of the Lord comes. And then, whoever calls out to the Lord for help will be saved. Thanks be to God for these very, very holy words. Well, my message today is titled, Are We Pentecostals? Now, for most United Church people, answers might range from an adamant no to we're the opposite of Pentecostals. But let's reserve our final answer until the end of the sermon. You know, we may not show it in the same way as our more evangelical brothers and sisters, but I'm sure we all share a passion for God. We may not be able to pinpoint the moment that when we first came to faith, or as they would say, we're born again. For many of us who have been attending church services and praying regularly from a very young age, it probably comes as naturally as breathing. We may not think too specifically about it, but as we go through life and stuff happens the way it will, well, sometimes any relationship needs to have the flames fanned a bit. And that's pretty much what happened at the first Pentecost, and hopefully at this one today. Now, after the resurrection, the disciples saw Jesus a few times, but they were waiting. And those hours and days of waiting, they were getting long, and they were getting hard to take. Because remember, when Jesus went up the hill with the disciples for the ascension, he said to them, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift I told you about, the gift my Father promised. John baptized with water, but in a few days you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you'll be filled with power. And you will be witnesses for me in Jerusalem, in all of Judea, and Samaria, and the ends of the earth. And then these were Jesus' very last words to the disciples. He said, the gift I told you about, the gift my Father promised, Well, when did he tell them about this? Well, in our first reading from John that Catherine read so well for us, this was just as the Last Supper was ending. And Jesus said, I will ask the Father, and he will give you an advocate who will stay with you forever. When the advocate comes, who I will send to you from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. Well, the Greek word for advocate is paraclete. And we can't really translate it directly into English. But going through all the different Bible versions, some of them say the helper, some say the comforter, some say the enabler, the encourager, the counselor, the advocate. And all of these, they're action words. Because the Holy Spirit, it truly is God's love in action. So after the ascension, The disciples did just what Jesus told them. They stayed in Jerusalem, and they waited, and they waited, and they waited some more. And after about a week of waiting and nothing happening, 
their passion was probably cooling a little bit. It must have been pretty tempting to say, okay, I'm going to get out of Jerusalem where the religious officials want to find us, where the Roman soldiers are probably hunting for us. Let's go back to Galilee. Galilee, where my friends and family are, where I could probably get my old job back, where people, they're going to be happy to see me, where I can go out in public without worrying about being arrested and persecuted. But two things were really stopping them. First, Jesus had specifically told them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for this gift. And secondly, it was the Feast of Weeks, which was one of the three main festivals that all Jews were supposed to attend in Jerusalem. Okay, so several days had passed, and it wouldn't be surprising if they started to feel that nothing was going to happen, and that their mission was over. Jesus was now safely in heaven. Their leader was gone. They were alone. And Lord knows, they were tremendously unqualified to change the world. But then we read in Acts 2, when the day of Pentecost came, they were in that place, and there was a noise from the sky which sounded like a strong wind, and the whole house they were sitting and tongues of fire spreading out and touching each person there. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to talk in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. Well, in this chapter, we read there were people from all over the Jewish world in Jerusalem that week for the feast. People from... Huh, let's get new lips. People from some pretty hard-to-pronounce places. And an interesting thing, if you take a map and you mark those places on them, they form a circle with Jerusalem at the center. Well, when the people who were attending the festival heard this, they rushed over and they heard the disciples speaking all these different languages. And they're like, what's this mean? And some of them were saying, ha, ah, these people are drunk. Well, we know alcohol sometimes has the power to slur some people's speech. I think we've all heard this a time or two. But I don't think it has ever given the people the power to instantaneously be fluent in a foreign language. Not even Babbel.com claims to do that. So Peter says, these people are not drunk, it's only nine in the morning. Well, with the dramatic results of Pentecost, the disciples' mission was not ending. It was just getting started. Now, they were more than adequately equipped to go out and spread the good news of Jesus Christ throughout the world, just as Jesus had directed in the Great Commission. All right, so Pentecost happens every year, but this year, for a change, let's look more closely at what Peter said after this. He continued, instead, this is what the prophet Joel spoke about. This is what I will do in the last days, God says. I'll pour out my spirit on everyone. Your sons and daughters will proclaim my message. Young men will see visions. Old men will dream dreams. I will pour my spirit out, and they will proclaim my message. I'll do miracles in the sky above. There will be blood, fire, and thick smoke. The sun will be darkened. The moon will turn blood red. As the great and glorious day of the Lord comes, and then whoever calls out to the Lord for help will be saved. Well, I'm finding more and more lately, a number of people have been asking me if I think we're in the last days. And when we read or watch the news, we may think that many of the horrible events fulfill prophecy. We might wonder what is happening to our world when in just a few weeks, we saw multiple shootings on Memorial Day weekend, preceded by that terrible Texas elementary school shooting, the California church shooting. In Buffalo, black people gunned down while grocery shopping. And that's on top of wildfires and the blood and the fire and the smoke as Ukraine and Russian lives continue to be lost. And these are just a few examples piled on to this global pandemic. In the past 2,000 years, 
There have been several incidents that made people wonder if the world was about to end. 9-11, both world wars, the Great Depression, the U.S. Civil War, and so many others around the globe, down through the ages. Well, in 1947, the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists established the Doomsday Clock as a symbol of how close we are to a global catastrophe. And the yacht year, the clock was set at seven minutes to midnight, which was a rather scary thought. Well, every January, the board monitors world developments to see if the clock needs to be changed. Now the two main threats are not just nuclear devastation, but also climate change. Since 1947, they've changed the clock 24 times. Eight back, 16 forward. The biggest buffer, that was in 1991 when it was set at 17 minutes to midnight. And that was due to the nuclear arms agreement between Russia and the U.S. The very closest it's been is where we are right now and have been since 2020, just one minute and 40 seconds away. That is so much closer than seven minutes in 1947. Well, as individuals, there's not much we can do to prevent nuclear annihilation. But on this Environment Sunday, maybe we would do well to be thinking even more seriously about how we can help reduce climate change. I saw this week on the Weather Network that greenhouse gases are now trapping 50% more heat than 30 years ago. That time frame of 30 years ago, it brought me back to when I first learned about climate change. In 1988, I was working for the pet value chain, and the owner, who was quite eccentric, was also a genius. And he had me work on a research project as to how global warming could affect his business. He recognized that corn was a principal ingredient in pet food, and that rising ocean levels could impact store locations on the coast. Well, in those days, almost no one had heard of climate change or global warming. And so I was in touch with Dr. James Hansen of NASA's Goddard Institute. He had presented his findings to the U.S. Congress, and most of them thought he was a quack. Dr. Hansen was kind enough to send me a huge amount of material, including his presentation slides, that forecast the impacts that we're now experiencing daily. Well, this is also Indigenous Day of Prayer, and we can learn so much from our brothers and sisters, and I'm going to begin with an Indigenous prayer today during the prayers of the people. Now, I don't want to scare anyone into thinking the world is about to end. However, maybe we should be thinking about what we would do if it was, if we knew, if we knew there were only 10 years left, how would we live our lives? What if it was five? What if it was just one? Would we spend late nights working or more time with our families? Would we be criticizing others or looking for the positives? Would we be allowing grudges and hurts to fester or seeking resolution? Would we be actively improving all our relationships with neighbors, with friends, with family, and especially with God? Because I think we would all probably be praying a lot more. Well, Jesus said, no one knows the hour when this world will end. But God spoke through Joel that when the great and glorious day of the Lord comes, whoever calls out to the Lord for help, will be saved. Well, a wise young woman once told me that her grandmother told her, whatever you would do to your house to help it sell, you should do long before time and actually enjoy living with the improvements. Well, in the same May, maybe we should consider what we would do if there was only one year left and start living that way now and start today. 
And some of that should include recognizing and rejoicing in the tremendous gift of the Holy Spirit that we receive at Pentecost. So yes, I guess that means we're all small p Pentecostals because we've all been touched by the Holy Spirit. And we're all small b Baptists because we believe in holy baptism. And we're all small c Catholics, except for Paul, because we're part of the holy Catholic, which means universal church. But we're all big C Christians and children of God who will save us if we call out for help. So let's try to live our lives the way we would if we knew the hour, for which we most sincerely say, thanks be to God. Amen. Well, this is our normal offering time, and there are plates in the narthex if you have brought an offering with you. If not, and for the folks at home, e-transfers can be made very easily to donations at glenabbeyunitedchurch.com. And whether it's financial gifts, gifts of your time, gifts of your talents, we are so grateful for what everyone does to help this ministry keep touching so many hearts. All right, as I mentioned, we're going to begin the prayers of the people. This is an indigenous prayer taken from the United Church Indigenous Day of Prayer Service 2022. So let's bow our heads in prayer, please. Creator God, in love and through love, you have called all things into being. We thank you for Mother Earth, our home. We thank you for the heavens that watch over us and the starlight that warms and guides us. We thank you for all the plants, for those that are medicine, for those that nourish us, for those that express your delight through their beauty and diversity. We thank you for all of our fellow creatures. May we share this earth with them in respect, with reverence. We thank you for soil, water, fire, air, for forests, plains and mountains, deserts and tundra and oceans. And now when so much of the world is threatened with destruction, help us to walk in humility with gratitude among all these sacred gifts from you. We thank you for being a God of liberation, for you are ever seeking to bring us into the joy of your salvation, into a just, equitable, and holistic celebration of life. We thank you for your compassion, which holds each and every one of us. We thank you for coming to us as Jesus, our teacher, brother, and friend, for dying on the cross and breaking the power of death in order to bring us back into harmony with you and all of creation. Creator, thank you for your truth and wisdom and for inviting us to travel the healing path with you. We offer you our hearts and minds so that we might embody your grace and share your blessings with all who live upon the earth. And we pray today for all those places in the world that is so in need of your healing touch. We pray for violence to end. We pray for reconciliation to happen. And we think of those who need to have your arms wrapped around them, who are in need of healing, that you will lift them up. Today, we thank you that we know that Armida is safely with you, and we pray for Gordon and Morna and the rest of her family. We pray for all those who are recovering from sicknesses, and we pray for all the folks who lift them up and help them through, give them strength. And we pray for all our friends who are traveling or enjoying the day and that they come safely back to us. In each of our lives, we have things going on. We have things that we need your help with that could be so personal, we can't share them with our friends or neighbors, but we know we can always bring them to you. So now, in the silence of these moments, Lord, please hear our silent prayers. when the time is right, no matter how you choose to speak to us, Lord, we so look forward to your answer. 
And we thank you so much for this church, for our church family, for those at home. And may we continue to thrive and to touch many, many hearts in this community and right around the world. And we thank you for coming to this world to show us how to live. And we pray today in the glorious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, our other Pentecost hymn that we're going to have today is number 207. The title is Spirit of God Unleashed on Earth. And I'll invite you to please rise and to remain standing after we sing this hymn. standing. I wanted to thank Yvonne and this huge and full choir 